Hello everyone. I just wanted to do a quick orienting video for week seven uh, because in this week we're moving from learning theories to models for online learning. And to get you thinking about that, I'd like you to consider these two analysis questions. What is the role of models in, in, in the implementation of online learning and what components might be in a model for implementing online learning? To get you thinking, you might want to look back to our week four discussion about theories and models and concepts and the different pieces that are in there. Um, when we start looking at models for online learning, we start seeing big bucket areas that tend to be across many of the models. So in our theories thus far in the course, we've been talking about general theories that inform online learning. And in this case, we're looking about, okay, how do we actually do it, online learning? And so across sectors, you'll see, they call them different things, but generally you'll see these types of categories. You'll see some consideration around the leadership and organizational piece. Uh, with respect to creating an online learning environment, uh, implementing and maintaining it. You'll see something around course design and development. So this would include things like the philosophy behind the program, um, the instructional design behind it, how that connects to the assessment of it, that sort of thing. Support services. These would include how we get faculty or in the corporate side or government side instructors uh, supported and our students supported. What needs to be considered there? Quality assurance and the program quality measures. How will you know that this program is doing, meeting the needs and achieving the goal that it intends to do? Resources and capacity. So this is everything from financial um, to different resources like in the academic setting. You would need the library resources and the capacity of the organization to sustain this. And then finally, the technology and the infrastructure required to do the online learning that the organization has decided it's going to create. So the model the organization is going to create. So in your PBLs this week, uh, this week, in your PBLs over the next few weeks, you're going to be exploring within your sector what types of models does that sector tend to adhere to and create when they're building their online learning. So for example, um, the other two videos this week are around the blended learning distinction, the synchronous, asynchronous, and they're ones you've already watched. And some of the articles for this week are ones you've already read. And that's because when you read them initially, it was that initial sense of, okay, this is what we're talking about. Now I'd like you to look at them again with different eyes, with a lens towards, okay, if in my sector they decide to adopt a blended learning model that has these types of features and this design philosophy behind it, then what does that mean for their leadership and organizational pieces? How about their support services? What about quality, resources and capacity? What kind of technology would they need? So you start to be able to get a much bigger picture of what does it mean to move to online learning in that sector. Um, with the government sector, for example, you'll need to do some digging into the different uh, online learning that is offered both provincially and nationally. So provincially, for example, in British Columbia, you can dig in and see what the public, uh, think, uh, what do they call it now, public affairs, I think, bureau is doing with respect to training for the government employees. Nationally, you can look at things like Department of Defense. There have been lots of people do their masters uh, out of the Department of Defense on what the online learning is there. So being able to dig into there. Corporate, um, you'll be able to look at not only what, depending on what slant you take, um, what uh, avenue within corporate, but you'll be able to look at some of the providers. So things like go to meeting, things like Articulate, what types of assumptions are they making that their corporate clients are using for a model for online learning? K-12, to higher ed, lots of different models out there for how online learning is being used and rolled out in these settings. So there's lots of good resources to start digging into. I've put a couple up here and I'd like to just speak to them quickly. The first one is harkens you back to one of the readings you did at the very beginning, so don't panic. Um, and it basically is towards 
a model of online learning? What are the pieces in that model? This is just one example. There are lots of examples out there. And hopefully as you're digging in your sectors, you'll be able to find some that are sector specific. What pieces of a model for online learning in that specific sector? The second bullet point is a link to the website that supports the Bates and Sangra book. And you'll notice that as we look forward, um, in your course outline, the readings for um, the book is titled Managing Technology in Higher Education, Strategies for Transforming Teaching and Learning. And you'll notice in the readings for week 9 and week 8, the book is there but no page numbers are assigned. And I will be assigning some page numbers but this is only if you've purchased the book and you don't need to purchase the book um, to do the course. It would be a good one for your professional library. Um, but off of their website you'll be able to get in and get a sampling for what the book is all about. They've got some great resources there, some super case studies to look into. Um, so it's one to spend some time on. Again, mostly targeted at higher ed at this point. I've also put up a link to the Commonwealth of Learning and this site has, again, it's uh, you could get lost in this site, lots of fabulous resources that have been developed for the Commonwealth countries, um, so range of funding opportunities there. Uh, there's everything from instructional design models for online learning to branding and marketing your online learning, um, so it's worth spending some time just taking a look to see what they have there. And the last link is a link towards, uh, more broadly, um, everything from um, training uh, to knowledge development to instructional design. It's sort of a bit of a, a warehouse kind of a link. Um, it does have some advertising on it, but if you move around the advertising, uh, there are some very good resources there and, and points to different resources. So I thought I would provide that for you as well. So just in terms of synthesizing all of this, and as you think about the, the other two videos that you'll be looking at again on asynchronous, synchronous, and blended learning, um, what I'd like you to start thinking about and being able to come to our tutorial to talk about is just this. How do models impact the implementation of online learning? And we're going to get into these different components of the models, but just generally we're starting to look at online learning models and how they can help guide the implementation as we go forward and in some ways perhaps constrain it. So I'm looking forward to our discussion and uh